In this tutorial in CyberLink Color Director, we'd like to give you some tips on using the timeline marker controls in order to position keyframes when you want to keyframe any of your color attributes. In the following tutorial, we'll show you a little bit more about keyframing directly. But if you want to modify the value of some of the color attributes of a clip while it's playing, you need to use these tools in order to do some keyframing. I have a clip of a rather bland river early in the spring, and I'll take and drag it down into my storyboard so I can edit it. And then we're going to click on the Adjustment tab at the very top, and that will open up a window on the left where we have all kinds of controls that we're going to use. I have enlarged the saturation control because, because we'll experiment with that in this exercise in the next one. We're going to look at how to begin to think about keyframing. Now, if you have one value you want to change for the duration of the entire clip, you never need to keyframe. Or you can split the, the clip up into many subclips and have a value that's constant during each one but that's a rather awkward way to go. So if you have a changing value, keyframes are very valuable. Let me show you a little bit about that. We have several buttons at the top in the adjustment. I'm on the manual tab, then I have a preset tab, and next to that I have a clock. When you click on the clock, that will show or hide your keyframing controls. I'll click on that and now it expands. You may have to adjust the width of the frame of this control. We'll put it back approximately to here. Now let me show you some important things about how this control works. We have up here a time indicator. And this is much like the one you have in the main PowerDirector screen. And you notice when I hover the mouse in this area, it shows me the time, but it also has a small arrow to the left and a larger arrow to the right. I can use that to magnify or shrink the values at the top. If I move to the right, I'm expanding the values. I can get right down to the frame control if I want to and magnify it as much as I desire. So right now, each of these markers will actually be moving one frame at a time. And if you look in the lower right, you have our time code. Now, the, this, this marker here, this line controlling my what's called a scrubber or a time indicator, is identical and bound to the one below the preview screen. If I move this one, the other one will move and vice versa. Watch, I'll move the triangle to the right, and now it says we are in 16 seconds and 6 frames. If I move this over one, now I'm 16 seconds and 7 frames. And now I'm 8 frames. Likewise, I can shrink this to tighten it up as much as I want. So wherever I move the one control, the other one will match it. That's a real nice feature. I'll show you more about that in a minute. Well, let's assume that we want to change a color value exactly at 11 seconds. So I can move my indicator back to precisely 11 seconds. And now if I want to remember that location, there's a tool I can use to do that. I right click on the triangle above all my values. And when I do that, I, it says add timeline marker. I also have a zoom in and zoom out. We'll deal with that later. Or I can just press the M key as my sh keyboard shortcut. And what that will do, it will create a marker. It will give it a name. Let's say I want to intensify blue. And I can click on the OK button. Now the nice feature about this, and we'll slide this a little bit to the left, is that no matter where I am in the project, if I click on that marker, it will snap to it, both in this screen and in the preview screen. Likewise, if I'm over here in the project and click on the blue, I can see the name of it, I can see the time of it, and I click on it and it will move my timeline indicator 
in both screens to that location. So the good news is if you have some places in your project where you want to make sure you make a change or modify a change, you can set as many of these as you want. I'll click on another one here. We'll say lower yellow and I can click on OK and now I have a second marker. Now they're so close together on this screen that you can't see them. They're virtually on top of each other because they're only frames apart. Uh, now if I want to either move one, I can take it and drag it to the left or right. Or if I right click on it, I can click on Manage Markers. That will open up another screen or if I hover over any of them, I can delete them by clicking on the red circle with the white X, or I can edit the name of the marker by clicking on the pence, pencil, and that will let me change it. Maybe I, instead of lowering the yellow color, I want to raise it. And I can click on OK, and I've edited that particular marker. I can delete them all, obviously, if I want to. So I'll click on OK. So now I have two markers, and I can have as many as I want. You don't have to use the marker feature at all uh, in order to uh, change the values and do keyframing, but it's a nice tool to remember that you have if you ever want to use it. The other thing about these timeline markers is when you export this clip, into your major project in PowerDirector, they're converted to clip markers. And so you see them preserved as clip markers in your major project. So this is a little bit about navigating around through these features. In the next tutorial, we're going to show you a little bit about the actual keyframing you do and how it's like and unlike keyframing you do in the general PowerDirector program.